South Carolina does not register voters by party. You may not have given this much thought, but assuming that you're registered to vote in South Carolina, and you need to be to take part in your precinct meetings on March the 3rd, you're not registered by party. You are simply a registered voter. So what that means under our state election laws, if there is a political party primary, whether it's Republican Party primary, Democratic Party primary, or the primary of any other party certified by the state of South Carolina, you can go and vote in that party's primary. So for example, when we have a Republican Party primary, anybody can come and vote. Now you can't vote in both the Republican Party primary and the Democratic Party primary. You have to choose one or the other. You can't vote in both. But if you sit home on primary day and vote in neither, and then there's a runoff two weeks later, perhaps there's both a Republican Party runoff and the Democratic Party runoff, again, you can choose. You don't have to vote in the first party primary to vote in the runoff. I'm very much disappointed with the system that, that we have in South Carolina that lets anybody come in and influence the choice of the party nominee. If you think about it, you have a First Amendment constitutional right to free association with other like-minded persons. So the concept is Republicans gather in groups to form the Republican Party for the purpose of promoting their ideals, promoting their ideas, and then nominating a candidate, a standard bearer, who can articulate those ideas and put them into action in the government, whether at the local, state, or federal level. When you have other persons who aren't Republicans, who are simply registered voters, who are permitted to vote in that party primary, you have a great influence. They have a great sway over the selection of that candidate, often, in my view, a moderating influence, one that I find to be unacceptable. If you look at it in South Carolina, this has happened repeatedly, particularly in our presidential preference primaries. We get a number of conservative candidates in the primary. And we have good conservative folks all across South Carolina, and they split up. They get behind different conservative candidates, and the moderate comes out and gets a plurality vote and is the nominee. For example, John McCain in 2008. What I believe is that we should go to a system where we register by party. And that not only do you sign up to be a voter to vote in the state of South Carolina, but you choose to be associated with the Republican Party or the Democratic Party or any other certified political party of your choice. You could also choose to be unaffiliated and not be associated with any one of those political parties. That's your choice. None of this would have any impact on your right to vote in November. In November, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat or unaffiliated or any other member of a political party, when the November election comes around, you choose that man or woman who you think would be best suited to serve for that particular office, whatever that office might be. But there's a big difference when we have the primaries preceding that election, generally in June. If you're not registered with the Republican Party, under the theory that I'm espousing, you wouldn't be able to vote in the Republican Party primary. Only those people who are Republicans would be able to vote in that primary. Now, to get to where I want us to go, we have to have a change in the state law. That's what we're looking to do, to have the General Assembly and the Act, and then the governor sign that bill into law. We've been pushing for this within the Republican Party for many years now. But we've had a Republican governor, and we've had control of both the state Senate and the state House for more than eight years now, and we've had no action at all on this bill. We've had no action at all in terms of getting registration by party and closing our primaries. So a few years ago, there was a case that came down out of the United States Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals that arose in Virginia. And that case essentially held that it's unconstitutional to have a state-run, mandated, open primary if that's the only method for the party to nominate its candidates. And let me be clear about this now. In South Carolina, we do have mandated, state-run, open primaries. So what that means is when the Republican Party goes to have its primary to select its nominee, the party doesn't run the primary, and the party doesn't pay for the primary. The state runs it. The state pays for it, and that's the manner by which we have to nominate our candidates. I have brought a lawsuit in the federal district court here in South Carolina seeking to enforce our constitutional rights to have the U.S. district judge strike down several of these South Carolina statutes that are unconstitutional. The basis of our case is simply this. We argue that we have no alternative to the state-run open primary. 
because the only other method in South Carolina for a political party to use to nominate a candidate is by convention. And the convention method is fine. It's been used for many, many years. We used to use it here in South Carolina years ago. The problem is that the state of South Carolina, by the action of its General Assembly, passed a law that says if a political party is going to nominate its candidates at a convention, it can only do so if it gets a 75% vote of the delegates at that convention. Think about that. It's a supermajority, 75%. Generally, I can't get 75% agreement within my own family as to where we're going to go to dinner. Think about that. To get 75% of a convention to agree to nominate candidates, it's nearly impossible. We are arguing that that's an equal protection violation because the state of South Carolina does not require a corporation to have a 75% majority to elect its board members or to make the decisions for its corporation. It does that with a simple majority vote. Churches aren't required to have, to, to have a supermajority to decide who their pastor is going to be or how they're going to run their church. They do things by a majority vote, and they set up their own rules within their church. Nonprofit organizations, any organization, any group of human beings that gather, they make their decisions by a simple majority of that group, or sometimes they create their own internal rules that might require a supermajority, but it's something that they've decided. The state does not impose upon them a supermajority rule. That's what the state of South Carolina has done to political parties. We maintain that that's unconstitutional because as a result, our only method is being forced into this state-run open primary. That's why we believe we have a very legitimate case and have a good chance of having that statute struck down by the U.S. District Court. If we're successful and that statute is struck down, then the legislature will have to determine from there whether they want to leave that option available for convention by nomination or whether they're going to move in to fill that void where that's former statute used to be. We're hoping that we can get the General Assembly to move, to take action, and to require registration by party, and then only permit those members of that political party to actually vote in that party's primary. In my view, that's exactly what we need for our conservative movement. I'm a lifelong conservative activist. The reason I'm in the Republican Party is I want to see the Republican Party the vehicle for the conservative movement. If you think about it, the way that I expect this to go, there will be a certain number of people who will sign up to register as Republicans, a certain number who will sign up to register as Democrats, and there will be many who will choose not to register at all. They want to be unaffiliated because they don't belong to either party. The net result will be you'll have a smaller elected electorate, a smaller electorate, where the conservatives will be able to control and nominate conservative candidates for the Republican Party. And I think the alternative is also true. I think the Democratic electorate will be more liberal and will elect more liberal candidates to represent the Democratic Party. And I want to take that to the general election in November every time I can get it. I think that's the best way for us to be able to advance the conservative cause. So if you haven't heard of our lawsuit, I want to make you aware of it. It's pending in the federal court right now. But I want to make sure that you understand, no matter what the outcome is of that lawsuit, win, lose, or draw, it's not going to be the end of the matter. This issue is going to have to be resolved in the General Assembly, ultimately. And I'll be seeking your support to, to influence your own member of the House, State House of Representatives and the State Senate, and ultimately the governor, to sign into law a new law that will require registration by party, that will close our primaries to keep non-affiliated persons out. We don't want moderate, moderating influence on the selection of our nominees. With your help, we can make this happen. We can nominate candidates who are true constitutional conservatives who will work with us to rein in an out-of-control federal government and make sure we have responsible government in Columbia as well. Thank you.